G'day everyone, Viv here. I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome back. This video is being simulcast on the Rubbish In Rubbish Out channel and the Knights of Dice channel. Uh, so if you're not subscribed to either of those channels, click the red subscribe button. And if you do like this video, please click that like button. It really does help keep me motivated and excited to keep making more videos. Um, right, let's get into testing some more of this MTN 94 paint from Montana. I did a previous video, which you can find here, where I used some of that paint to, uh, you know, act as a color primer on a 28 mil metal US Marine from Eureka Miniatures, and I was super impressed. You can, like I said, go watch that video here. So I wanted to try it out on some MDF. So I could find out, you know, how we might be able to, you know, incorporate that into painting our models and, you know, quickly smashing out some stuff and getting it on the table with minimal effort. So let's check it out. I take two samples of MDF and I spray one of the samples flat black with just that regular fiddly bit spray uh, from Bunnings here in Australia. And then I spray colors on both of the samples. In this case, this is Amazon green, um, starting off with that. It's absolutely beautiful. It, you know, of all the graffiti paints I've used in the past, none of them need a primer. Excuse me. They all go on beautifully. What I was surprised with, and it seems odd, I'm just going to stop this here and come back. It seems odd. I was going to say that I was surprised how well these paints covered over the black undercoat and the fact that there was no distinguishable difference between the raw MDF or the one that had been painted black. Now, I don't know why I'm surprised because, you know, these paints are designed to cover. They're designed to live outdoors. And, uh, you know, these paints, uh, you know, I haven't done this sort of testing with many other paints. Maybe I should. Um, a lot of people said the MT, uh, the Montana Gold series is very good. Maybe I'll grab some of that. Um, but, you know, in my experience, I'm so used to a black base coat changing the tone of a paint that goes on top of it. In this case, it had absolutely no effect and I ended up with exactly the same color. I would still base coat all my models black because it does help with shading. Um, but, you know, I'm super impressed. Here, you know, I'll just pause this and come back. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll come back. So I wanted to do a gradient test to see how these paints might be able to be used to highlight uh, on top of each other. And Jack Sarge from Jack Sarge Paint, Jack Sarge Painting, I hope that's correct. I'll put some links in the description below to his YouTube and his Facebook page. He's a commission painter based here in Australia. I'm pretty sure he's in Tasmania. He does a lot of work with Dark Age figures, highly prolific. I love seeing his stuff pop up on Facebook. Wonderful, wonderful painter, very well worthwhile checking out. He'd asked either on Facebook or YouTube or somewhere, you know, um, that he was interested to see how these might act as a zenith or highlight, and I'm assuming it for miniatures because that's what he does. But I wanted to find out how it would behave on MDF, and I was super impressed. So I take these two gray colors, I obviously apply the dark one first, and then from a 45, I spray the other one on, just dusting it on there. And it's given a beautiful transition. I couldn't believe it. I was so wrapped, I'm gonna pause that again. I was so wrapped at this point during the testing that I went and found a squad barracks from the Invictus range and painted that straight away. I just wanted to, I just wanted to see a complete model painted. And uh, obviously I filmed that, I recorded it, and I've edited that into a short video and you can watch that video here. Well, maybe you can't, depends on which sequence I upload the videos in, right? Anyway, keep an eye on the channel. Make sure you click the red subscribe button, click the bell notifications and select all to make sure that you don't miss any more videos in the future. I've been absent from YouTube for a long time, but I'm coming back with a fury. I've even got some mood lighting going on. Uh, I'm just so excited to be sharing, uh, you know, my hobby with people on YouTube again, interacting with people in the comments. I read all of them. I try to respond to, uh, you know, um, all of them where appropriate. So um, anyway, you know, I'm, I'm going to ramble and lose track of what I'm talking about. Um, let's just get back. Let's just get back. <laughs> I, wanted, I wanted to try out some regular wall paints, internal house paints on top of this to see how it behaves because some of the paints in the past, I remember some of the paints from Sigma 80 have been slightly hydrophobic. And when we've tried to put these sorts of paints on top, it hasn't bonded and hasn't stuck. Um, I'm testing out some, I'm going to pause this here. 
testing out some of these weathering sprays from Plastic Soldier Company. Now, unfortunately, these are no longer available. I'm pretty sure that these are originally and probably still are made by model mates in the UK and branded and licensed to Plastic Soldier Company to sell to the miniature market, scale model market for you know, weathering tanks and planes and you know all that sort of stuff. But, you know, I don't know how well it did. We love them. We absolutely love them, but they didn't renew their license. So they haven't been available um, here in Australia for a little over a year, but uh, we bought all the stock from the Australian distributor when they were dumping that line because it was no longer in production. So we've got massive amounts of this weathering spray. So I wanted to make sure that this was going to, uh, you know, bond okay to that paint. It is a water-based spray. It's kind of a weird product. Um, it's water-based. I'm drying it with a hairdryer because I'm impatient, but it's water-based. So you can take a wet rag or a tissue or a cloth or whatever after and, you know, remove some of that material to, you know, change its appearance and its effect. And uh, I'm very, very impressed. At this stage, I'm sold. I can't wait to use more of these paints. I'm just so excited. Uh, you know, they're going to make painting some terrain just so much easier. You know, airbrushes are wonderful and I love to use them, but, you know, I don't like cleaning airbrushes. It's a pain in the butt. Um... But these paints are just working beautifully. And even over those darker colors, you know, that, that orange wall paint is going down beautifully. Um, I'm very, very impressed. Um, I, ju I just can't wait. But like I said earlier on, um, I was so impressed with that gradient test that uh, I went ahead and painted uh, a squad barracks from the Invictus range. This model took me about 15 minutes. I'd say between 15 and 20 minutes. You know, I sprayed it that darker gray, a light gray, bluish gray, gave it a quick dry brush, a bit of sponging. I think I put a wash on it at some stage, homemade black wash, and dabbed that up with a tissue. It looks great. And for 15 to 20 minutes worth of effort, like literally 15 to 20 minutes, you know, I used a hairdryer to dry the layers. For 15 to 20 minutes worth of effort, very little effort, it looked great. Um, so I filmed that and I recorded that. And like I said before, it depends on when, when I put that up in, in which sequence these goes up, you'll be able to find that on the channel. Um, so these MTN 94 paints get my big tick of approval and I can't wait to use more of them and just crank out a whole load of stuff for the club, for the studio. Uh, I'm excited. I really am. I just, you know, there we go. I'm loving them. Thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you next time. See ya.